I'm about to show you the exact system I use to turn any course into a personal AI coach using Tana. Normally you need three different tools to do this, one to capture notes, one to transcribe, and one for AI. But Tana combines all three in one single tool, which is why this system actually works. And to be honest, it feels a little addictive because each module you complete unlocks new skills for your co-pilot. And when it combines the course knowledge with your own notes and projects, you finally start implementing instead of just learning. So let me show you exactly how I've set this up in Tana step by step so you can start using it on your own courses straight away. But before we jump in, if you don't have time to watch endless YouTube tutorials and you just want to build a high performing digital workspace that works harder than you do, then check out my Tana Fast Track course. It will get you up and running in Tana fast. First, you'll learn all the fundamentals in less than an hour. Next, you'll choose from our six core workflow templates that are simple, plug and play. There's not 86 super tags to deal with. You choose what templates you need to customize your own workflow. And you also have our TFT community to ask questions and get direct help from me, plus a load of other resources. Over 600 people have already taken Tana Fast Track and loved it. So if you want to get on the Tana Fast Track, I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so let's get into setting this up in Tana. Now, firstly, if you're wondering what the heck is Tana, well, Tana is like a supercharged all-in-one workspace for your brain. So imagine if a note-taking app, a database, and an AI assistant had a baby. Well, that's Tana. So it basically lets you freely capture ideas, organize them in really flexible ways, and it has AI built in so you can build workflows that help you get work done. So what you're going to need for this system is you want to have a course super tag and you want to have a lesson super tag. Those two things are going to get you kind of 80% of the way. And then we're going to add some AI commands into the mix. So if you have a look at my course super tag here, so my super tag has a status. It's either not started in progress or it's complete. I can add in who the course is by. I can set a start date. If it's like a course that I'm doing like at a certain time, if it's an evergreen course, I don't have to fill that in. And then I also have links for the course community and the course course material that I can link to to kind of get to them quickly. So that's kind of, you know, at a very basic level, you want to have somewhere where you can house your courses. Within that, you also want to have a lesson super tag. Okay, so on my lesson super tag, if I open that up, so basically all I have on the lesson super tag is a field for the related course. So how you want to set this up is this is a field where it's options from super tag. And when you go in and configure it, it's a couple of things you want to do. So you want to make sure that the super tag that it is referencing is the course super tag. Okay. And then you also want to set this to ancestor with this super tag. So what that does is, so when I'm in a course, I can just go lesson one and tag it with lesson. And what happens is the course has automatically been inserted in there. Okay, so it's the same course. And that's going to matter once we set up our course GBT. All right, so once you've got a lesson super tag, what we're going to do is we are going to give the lesson super tag powers to transcribe the video lessons that we're, wat we're watching. So here's what this is not. It's not one of those junky AI workflows that just dumps a pile of transcripts into ChatGPT and calls it learning. Honestly, that's not how real learning happens. The real magic here is that this is immersive. So you're still watching the lesson, engaging it with it as you usually would. But at the same time, Tana is working in the background, transcribing everything, getting all of that into kind of a knowledge base so that we can use it later in our course GPT. So please don't skip this step because it's like you and your GPT are learning together. All right, so let's set this up in our lesson. So you can see here that in my lesson super tag, I also have a microphone button. And when I click that button, it starts transcribing whatever the system audio is. So if I'm watching a video, it's going to be doing that. This is the meeting note taker in Tana. But in this instance, we're not in a meeting. We are actually watching the video materials of a course. So to set this button up, what you're going to do is come over into your lessons or your lesson super tag, go to AI and commands. And what you want to turn on is this one here, audio enabled tag. And you're also going to switch on include the system audio. So you want to include anything that's coming out of the computer and you want to output as a transcript. So that means that every time you're watching a lesson, 
you come in, you switch the microphone button on and Tana transcribes it in the background. And then we're going to take all those transcripts and we're actually going to put that into our GPT so that then we can have this GPT that we can talk to for the course. All right, so once that's set up, when you go in to watch a video lesson, all you have to do is click this microphone button and Tana will start transcribing. You also might take some notes. I usually take my own notes just because it keeps me engaged as I'm learning. But what we want to do then is at the end, once it's finished transcribing, we want to have it summarize the video. And what I've done here is I've created a prompt that I call Friend Notes GPT. So it's like, you know, when you're in high school, and you asked your friend like can I borrow your notes from that class and they give them to you this is that kind of prompt so it should feel like a friend has kind of like summarized this and lent you their notes so this is a course that I've been taking you can see here I've taken a few notes not that many but this is what happens when you run this friend's GPT so how I have written this GPT and I'll show you prompt in a minute but basically like I don't want something that's just like bullet point summary I want something that feels like if I read this again you know 12 months from now I would know exactly what I'm doing so I really I use Claude for this because I find that Claude you know can work a bit more conversationally so I've got all sorts of like headings right dissolving resistance breaking down the framework so like all of this is like you know content frameworks real world examples how to craft your own posts like this recap and next steps like it is really comprehensive and I love this prompt so let me show you how we set this up so if you go into your lesson super tag we are looking for AI and commands and if you notice that when we turned on audio enabled tag and these two, we got this text processing agent. So when you open this configuration, you might not see any fields in here, or you might see some. So if you see any fields, delete them, right? And then we're gonna add these in. So the first field that you want to add in, and when you're working with prompts like this, how you know what fields to add are up here, okay? All of these params are fields that you can add to this particular command. So the first one that you're gonna to wanna to add is text processing agent. So the way to add a field is just shift period, right? Field you wanna add, so like if it was insert output strategy, I would add that there, okay? So text processing agent, generic, all right? There's two kinds here, meeting and generic. I just set this to generic because it's not a meeting, okay? So this is the friend note GPT prompt. So firstly, what's going to happen? You'll receive a transcript of a lesson, podcast, or video. So by the way, I don't just use this on course lessons. I use it when I'm listening to podcasts or when I'm watching YouTube videos. So your job is to write a summary that feels like a smart friend is explaining the key ideas to me, not just listing them out. Structure it like personal notes I want to come back to. Use headings, short paragraphs, explain not just what was said, but why it matters and how to apply it. I found that adding this in meant that the notes or, or the summary that I got wasn't just like a bullet point list, but it actually starts to think through, well, how could I apply this, right? Keep it engaging, clear and human, like someone who really gets it and is breaking it down for me. Avoid dry bullet points or passive tone. I want to enjoy reading these notes and be able to create them later. So I've just got some extra kind of instructions, use headings, subheadings, write in a conversational tone, explain frameworks clearly. So a lot of videos that I watch have you know, got frameworks in them or that kind of thing. I want them to break them down. Include examples, right? Add, remember this call outs, avoid flat lists, and end with a recap or suggested action steps. And then also what I do is I get it to augment the summary with my own notes. And so this is what I mean by it being an immersive experience. You're already watching the video, you're taking some notes yourself, and then AI is taking your notes and it's taking the transcript and it is putting that together into some powerful kind of like recap notes that you can go and revisit later. So you just go my notes and you're adding here at content. So uh, if I take this away, what you're looking for to do is go at content. Okay, depending on how much content um, tags you have, you're looking specifically for this one here. Okay, it's got a little, uh, this little icon. Okay, what that means is it's grabbing all the content from the current node. So everything I've written in the node, it's taking that. And then it's also taking the transcript. So same thing at source. And that's all that you have to do. And what that does is it runs as soon as you stop the microphone button. 
So once the video stopped and you want it to summarize, you just press stop recording and it will put that summary in straight away. All right, so I know you didn't just come here to get summaries of the lessons that you take in courses. This is what we are here for. We want to create an actual GPT that has all of the knowledge of our course and that we can just ask questions of. So here's how to build that out. All right, so once you start to have to get a few lessons in here, you'll have lesson and then you'll have your summary notes. And then in the source code, it will have the transcript. So what we're going to do from there is build what I call course GPT. OK, so on your course super tag, you want to add this command. So if we go into course and we go into AI and commands, what I've got here and it's in a menu item. But if you just had this here, it would sit as a button. OK, and so if I open this up, what you're seeing here is a chat that has all of the knowledge of the course behind it. And I can just start asking questions. So to set this up, we want to go. So if we open up our course GPT, what you can see here is the command that we're using is a start AI chat. And if we open up the configuration, we have an agent in here, which is course GPT and an initial prompt, which we don't actually fill in. OK, so if I open up course GPT and zoom in here, this is where uh, we set up a system prompt. OK, and a chat greeting. And we've got kind of the AI model that we're using. So in here, this is a pretty simple system prompt. I kept it very simple because I kind of want it to be all purpose. But the real magic behind this is that it pulls in all of the context. So at first, it's like the purpose is to assist users with understanding and implementing concepts from any online courses. So the role as a course assistant, I gave it an expert level of, of advance. So it should be suitable for online courses, but not kind of like graduate level. This GPT, you know, communicates in a casual and conversational style. If we look at the specific tasks, it's got to answer any questions about the course material, explain or clarify ideas, help users implement the course concepts in practical ways. Then the broad abilities here is support learning and application, adapt explanations to advanced but not graduate level depth. OK, and then the constraints here is do not give advice or information outside the provided course material, avoid personal opinions or unrelated topics. And then responses should be advanced, but not kind of like expert level researcher, like online course kind of um, thing. OK, and then we just say here is your course knowledge. So here we've got the course and then this tagged entity here means that it's pulling from the node name. OK, so this is dollar sign squiggly bracket and then name and then closing the squiggly bracket. You can also achieve this by just going at node name and choosing this here. OK, either of those work. And then you want to pull in the context. OK, so all the data from the current node. So as you have been taking notes and you've got lessons one after the other, then the GPT is going to take all of that and it's going to put it into its knowledge. And then when you click the button, it's got all of that and it can start to um, answer questions for you. All right. So what I do then is just with the chat greeting, I just put how can I help? All right? And then again, as I said, there's no initial prompt here because we want to give it that first question or that first prompt when it opens up the chat. And then the only thing I do here is then choose the AI model. Now, now you might be wondering, like, how many credits is this going to is this going to use? So I have tested this on Gemini, GBT and Claude. Claude is the most expensive of all the models. So per chat, which basically means like per every time you send send a chat message, it's about 27 credits. OK, so that's fairly expensive compared to GPT-5. I tested this with and this is weird, like you know, a 12 module course, right? And each module is about an hour long, right? So GPT-5 was about two credits per chat. So you can see the big difference between 27 and two. And then Gemini was one credit per chat. So I've actually been just using Gemini to do this and I find that it works very well. And because, so, and the way I think about this is like anytime I need AI to write for me or to act in a human kind of way, I tend to use Claude, but anything else, I tend to use Gemini or GPT. And so, as I said, when you're on a course, anytime you need your course GPT, you can just hit 
course GPT and the chat opens and you can start chatting. And what I found with this method, it actually pushes me to want to complete more lessons because the more lessons I complete, the smarter my GPT actually gets. So let me show you how I use this in real life on an actual course. This is a course that I'm doing at the moment. And you can see here that I've got up the top here is the workbook. So this course originally had a workbook in Google Docs and I just bought it in here so that I can, um, I could use this in here because I do everything in Tana. And then down here are the lessons. Okay, so this is one of the lessons that, um, so if we zoom in here, so they're like, this is just a, a screenshot I took and then some of the notes, right? So then here, this is the summary, right? So you can see here, like you've got, it's fairly detailed. So if I was ever to kind of like come back in here, I could very easily kind of slip back in and just know kind of everything to do with that. But what I tend to do is a couple of different things. If I haven't done this course in a while, what I can do is open this up and I'll do something like this. I need to catch up on the course. Can you tell me what we've covered so far? And it'll just give me a really clear kind of like thing about like, okay, here's everything we've covered. And then that kind of like catches me up. And so that's one way I use it. Another way that I use it is actually to complete the workbook. So if I was to do, let's say I was like working on this three to five supporting lessons, or even I think I worked on this, the catnip delivery. And so what I can do is open up course GPT and I can say, um, I need to work uh, on my catnip delivery. Okay. Uh, can you help me? Right. So something simple like that. It's already got all, all the info. But what I really love here is I can bring in anything that is in my Tana workspace. So if I've got some info about a workshop that I want to run, it's called meeting madness. All right. And I can say, here is my initial idea. And then Basically, it can take the course content, all right, and then based on the actual course material, right, so it knows that a catnip delivery should be these three things, right, and this is then what it suggests could be that catnip delivery. This is where, like, you combine what you have in Tana, so if you've got a project that you're working on, you know, this is obviously a the a workshop that I do because that's the kind of things that I produce. But now you can combine the information in the course with things that you're actually working on. I find that it makes it so much easier to actually implement things from the course. Now, look, I can't guarantee that you'll finish every single course you invest in now, but I can guarantee you'll have a very powerful system that will help you implement everything that you're learning. And by the way, if you are someone who also learns through reading and highlights a lot of articles and books, I actually created a video showing how I built three AI agents that turned my Readwise highlights into actual real insights. It's the perfect companion to this course system. And don't forget, if you want to build a high-performing ton of work space fast, then check out my Tana Fast Track course in the description below. And if you want more Tana content like this in your feed, then like and subscribe to the channel.